Chapter Nine of the Rock Frog. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The Rock Frog by Harriet Anna Cheever. The Green Frog. True enough. The frogs of Long Pond and the toads of the garden had no more trouble from boys, dog, or mysterious powders. There were all night croakings, jigs, and spinnings about in meadow and bog. More and more also was Judge Kerchunk looked up to and trusted. Visiting frogs went always to see him, and there was never lack of callers either by day or by night yet every creature craves that for which his nature cries out and while the rock frog lengthened out and looked full grown in most respects he yet was thin lacking plumpness and the rounding of body natural to a healthy frog it troubled the long ponders but there was nothing to do and the sensible judge only smiled widely when one and another of his friends would mutter and sputter at his shut-up condition one sweet summer night as companies of frogs squatted on and about the rock judge kerchunk all at once leaned forward saying he heard an echo against his cabin walls and he thought some marsh frogs were on the way over yes the next moment they all heard the jog trot and the deep booming of the coming visitors the drum-like voice of booma room rising above the rest as they reached the rock they were greeted with politeness and booma room first of all proceeded to introduce a fine great fellow in a green coat with a baggy throat and active-looking limbs sitting before the little door of the rock he said i have brought with me judge kerchunk the green frog who you will remember was a prisoner with me in the eagle's nest he waited a tiresome number of days before seeing a chance to try the plan of escape he then had in his mind i shall let my friend tell his own story to you all as he was anxious to see the frog judge who was the means of my getting away also my many friends at long pond the green frog was given a place close beside judge kerchunk's door where he began to speak there is only one reason why i cannot entirely enjoy telling the story of how i got back my freedom i cannot forget that while your beloved judge is by no means surrounded by the perils that lately were all about me he yet is to a great degree a prisoner and it would be unkind to rejoice too freely in his presence over what is denied him your judge has been told that it was while speaking earnestly about a new law before our deep pool frogs that i was swooped down upon and borne away the next thing i knew i was in the eagle's nest at first all i did was to keep still and tremble then when i found that the air giant and his mate liked to see me hop about i tried to leap here and there as gracefully as i could for i wanted to amuse them so much that they would not swallow me in a hurry you may have heard that there was a long showy lizard in the nest and a wee cunning little duckling and how ducky escaped in the claws of the marsh king you must also know before speaking of my own escape let me tell how the lizard got away one night the eagle's mate brought home a mouse alive it was a sprightly little customer that would not have stayed in the nest unwatched for a moment had it not been for the way in which madame eagle fastened it down by the tail she made a twine of fine grasses much like the net of twigs that 
you will remember, kept the lizard in its tight little bed. Ah, she showed great skill, fastening an end of the twine into one side of the nest, and, with the other end, pinning Mousy down so she could stand up or lie down, but could not reach around and nibble the tightly woven cord. The hawk knew the same trick. I noticed that the lizard and the mouse grew friendly, and could see that they meant to help each other, if in any way they possibly could. And I could scarcely believe that little creatures of the field had sense or mind enough to think out things as they will, had I not seen proof of it with my own eyes. Madame Eagle certainly meant to have her unwilling visitors too far away to give one another any help whatsoever. But one bright night, when both the eagle and his mate had soared away, and we knew would not return for hours, the mouse began jumping, tugging, and straining at that braided chain, never giving itself a moment's rest. I, meantime, had tried both teeth and claws on network and twine, but having no teeth, I could not manage to bite or pull either apart. After a long time, Miss Mousy did succeed in stretching her chain a little, yet she could not turn around and nibble at it without twisting her poor little tail more than she could bear. Ah, but she saw that, with a bit more of stretching, she could reach an end of the network that held the lizard a captive. To work she went again, and after much hard effort, lo, she could reach the braided twigs. A few sharp bites with her pointed teeth, and out darted the lizard. Then what did it do? In an instant it was at the top of the nest, and I wondered if it would be so ungrateful as to flash away and leave poor Mousy in the lurch. No, it soaked its body in a puddle that had settled in a hollow of the rim, then back it glided and sat on Mousy's tail. This it did several times, until the moisture so loosened the twine that a series of jumps enabled the Mousy to nibble herself free. Then the proceedings were so funny that, for the moment, I forgot that I was a poor prisoner, forgot that I was not free and not soon likely to be, and laughed so hard that I was surprised at the sound of my own rolling croak. I had climbed quickly to the rim of the nest, wanting to see the pair take their leave. The lizard and the mousy reached the rim, just as I did. Then the lizard paused a moment, and, like a flash, mousy mounted to its back, curled her nimble legs against its sides, and so, with mousy riding piggyback, straight down went the lizard, striking on one of the rocks far below. Then it did not move, but off hopped Mousy, and I knew she was safe. It was several hours before the handsome lizard moved slowly out of sight. I think the hard blow stunned it, and I'm afraid it was badly injured. I was now the only creature left in the nest, and my fears increased. For might not the eagle think I had assisted the others in escaping? and take vengeance on me, if only my plan could be tried. I was crouching sad and lonely, thinking of my lovely home and merry companions by the deep pool, when, ah, a sound reached my ears that sent me to the top of the nest in a trice. Yes, there was what I had longed to see, a sail, I had hoped a boat might pass under the cliff, and at the side where the rocks beneath did not project or come out, and that, by making a mighty leap, I might scramble on board, then hide before anyone would know what had fallen. On, on came the craft, a small fishing vessel I swallowed hard and fast, for was not 
here the only means of escape i had been able to think of two or three times it appeared as if about to turn aside then in the stream of moonlight i rejoiced to see it drawing nearer up it came until nearly under the cliff then o oh glory it was slowly drifting by now or never i must make a leap for life there down i came with a mighty bounce right atop a man's hat up jumped the man caught off his hat and using strange strong words i did not know the meaning of began looking around but quicker than a wink i had taken another leap and scuttled under a coil of rope it was a rock cried the man a chunk of rock fell right on to my head lucky i had my hat on i thought it was a lump of mud said another well rock or mud what has become of the creature laughed the man i think it bounced and went overboard said a third and so they gave it up and did no more guessing and i remained snugly and safely hidden away until we reached the land when i hopped ashore easily enough now that was the plan i had in mind but did not wish to speak of when the marsh king was my companion in the nest to plunge down on to a passing vessel then stole myself away but had he been with me when the vessel came i should surely have invited him to join me in the risk i next set about the pleasant task of finding my own deep pool it took several nights i was far far away but my instinct guided me and i was on the right road toward home when i accepted an invitation from a friendly frog to attend the birthday party in a fine bog of an old frog who was about to celebrate his ninetieth birthday to this party had been invited frogs from different places and of different tribes and what was my joy to see among the guests a green frog from my own dear deep pool district my troubles were over very happily we journeyed homeward when the merry gathering was over and a right grand jubilee we had on the wanderer's return much such a one as the marsh frogs enjoyed when their king came back now i must see your beautiful pond fiddle and sing with the long pond frogs then take leave of them and the marsh frogs and journey back to home sweet home good-bye judge kerchunk and may you live long to enjoy the affection of your own long ponders as well as the high esteem of many other of our tribes end of chapter nine recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chapter ten of the rock frog this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the rock frog by harriet anna cheever chapter ten the great storm the smiling sunny summer was gliding softly away by and by would come the time for the leaves to fall the pond to grow dark and cold the days to grow short the nights chilly and long then winter would come puffing along freezing the water making hard lumps of the mud driving southward the birds and making bare the trees under cover would creep the froggies and the toads not a cheerful gleesome hopper would be seen and yet they would be alive and only waiting for another spring to come and wake them to peep hop and croak as merrily as ever 
yet there were still to be bright warm days before summer would be quite gone fruits were ripening everywhere berries blue and black hung heavily on spicy bushes children shouted and played in the meadows and all through the dewy night the frogs kept up a merry-go-round of joyous ringing sounds there came one morning during the last week of summer when it was so hot that even the frogs were silent while keeping part way in the pond scarlet and crimson flowers ripe gorgeous and fragrant flamed along the garden path appearing to laden the air with heat and perfume the watchdog lay before his kennel tongue out and panting hard hens wandered about with mouths wide open sure sign of great heat madame puss left her favorite perch on the piazza and lay sprawled on the grass under the shadow of a tree cows finding a brook or a wet spot stood where they could knee-deep in water birds twittered but softly and did not fly far men went about under great umbrellas hats off and used as fans and with collars wilted almost out of sight during the afternoon it grew very still people went about slowly and cautiously as if almost afraid of the great heat farmers loosened their horses from the plough and led them to the barn showing mercy both to themselves and the poor beasts it grew more still the sky began to look dark while a yellow light showed through the glooming of the clouds several long pond frogs went with sluggish leaps to the rock of judge kerchunk we think there is going to be a storm they piped the farmer has put the cattle and hens in the barn and carefully fastened back the shutters he has tied up several tender trees and saplings and put great tubs where they will catch the rain then a few marsh frogs came hurrying along it is going to rain they said and we are trying to get back to the marsh before it begins at that judge kerchunk said my advice to all the frogs is to get close to the pond to lie low and keep huddled together there will not be time to reach the marsh before the storm will be upon us there is going to be a great wind so great that frogs had better look out that they are not tossed about i think too that hail will come down the little sharp stones of frozen water that are harder than ice slow to melt and strong enough to break glass if they chance to strike it it was not long before there was a booming of thunder and flashes of lightning streamed along the purple and coppery sky are you afraid asked one of the long pond frogs as they were about to leave judge kerchunk alone afraid exclaimed the rock frog with a slow smile afraid well i think not after all the storms i have seen it would be strange enough if i should feel anything like fear i am afraid of nothing remember my children that kind nature knows when her flowers are drooping for want of rain that the grass is drying up the streams are going dry and the fields trees insects and all things in her vast kingdom are crying out for rain long pond has been so low piped a young frog that we were afraid it might dry up entirely no fear of that said rock frog the springs which feed it are too deep and too high up on the hills for our pond to really fail us but notice the refreshment and the freshening that will be over everything after the rain has come the beautiful welcome rain never be afraid of anything in nature i cannot tell how it is 
yet i feel sure that back of nature is some power that guides great nature herself and that knows what is best for man birds flowers insects and for the frogs as well now go i smell the rain the wind is rising the thunder is growing louder make haste for the pond there was a scrambling and leaping for the shelter of the pond with its deep grasses and muddy hollows birds were in their nests the hum of insects had ceased the dog was in his candle puss was under the piazza then the storm broke rain beat down like the tramping of a host the wind was like a mad swift whirl pushing all before it grass bent over and lay flattened with the drenching drowning downpour rose leaves fell in showers leaving the bushes shorn of their sweet blooms great trees swayed and swirled as if about to snap apart blinds rattled weak fences were blown down loose stones on the wall clattered to the ground then hail came pelting down the hard prickly hail a wilful gosling that would not obey its mother goose when she cried squawk squawk came under the shed come under the shed ran squealing into the barn and began looking for the pins and needles the silly creature thought must be sticking in its little yellow drumsticks water rushed like a river down the road and fell in heavy streams from housetop barn and shed the wind roared like a giant pellets of hail clattered down lightning flashed and glared while thunder crashed and boomed and seemed as if bowling and growling under the earth so violent a storm did not last long after a time the rain began to fall less heavily wind still rocked the trees but tender twigs no longer snapped and fell the hail ceased the darkness lifted lightning flared in fainter flashes the thunder muttered from afar then the sun came struggling through the clouds rosebuds that had clung close to the stronger stems raised joyous heads of promise in the sweet and freshened air the flaming scarlets and gold of the garden smiled with rosy drops on their beautiful cheeks their radiant tints softened by the cooling raindrops birds began glad twitterings overhead the dog fluttered over the lawn in sheer delight at the fresh new air that was all about and the grand wet paths over which he could parade puss stretched herself in cosy comfort on the piazza mat insects hummed with relief long pond had swelled and was full to the banks with sparkling rippling water toads hopped blithely along the garden delighting in its soft muddy ridges the long pond frogs were jubilant and skipped to and fro their merry piping sounding all along the region of the pond let us go and see good judge they cried and tell him how everything is rejoicing after the storm so over to the rock went a large company of frogs father hindlegs and patty go frump leaping along at the fore up the rock scrambled several at once and at the top what they stared as if their goggle eyes would burst out of their heads there sat the rock frog silent dignified and grand outside the rock one by one they squatted in speechless staring astonishment there was never a peep a croak nor a boom as the gathering crowd only stared and stared the rock frog himself was the first to speak my children he said look at my door and looking at their beloved judge had bade them the frog saw that a piece of rock had been split away leaving a wide space where the little peephole 
of a door had been how did it happen chorused the frogs i cannot tell answered the rock frog except to say that amidst a rushing of rain a tempest of wind the rattling of hail and the flashing of lightning there came a crash not a frightful one it did not alarm me then i saw a piece of loose rock lying outside my door and i wondered where it came from all at once i noticed it was light above my head i looked up part of the roof of my house was gone some kindness and goodness had opened wide my door out i came into the storm free joy 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 i let the raindrops cover me over i cared not for the hail i did not notice the wind the lightning showed me the wide sweep of the heavens the thunder was my friend when it cleared i started to hop over and astonish you all then i found i could only take short leaps and my legs ached when i tried to hop about as i had never given a long leap since i was a little boy frog it is not strange that my joints are stiff and refuse to work easily then i knew the wonder would be quite as great as if you came and found me sitting quietly outside the door that had shut me in so long and truly i could scarcely stir for the glory of it all i seemed to see the whole great world spread out before me every moment i am sending praise and thanks way back of nature they must reach somewhere the news spread like a flash all along the banks of long pond over to the marsh and far on to the deep pool district where dwelt the great green frogs at the full of the moon there was a night of rejoicing such as never before been seen around the banks of long pond every long ponder was on hand the marsh frogs were present in great numbers the green frogs came hopping over their leader taking surprising leaps in his anxiety to tell judge kerchunk of his delight at knowing he was free the revel was at full height from midnight on such a peeping and piping such a drumming and fiddling such a booming and dancing hopping leaping and plunging farmer harris said he believed the frogs had gone crazy in their delight that the pond was full again the dog dared not show his face for fear they might eat him up the boys rolled over in their beds and giggled at the noise heard in their sleep down by the pond through the few remaining days of summer and during the fair sweet days and nights of early and middle autumn judge kerchunk rejoiced grew plump nimble and strong took fine journeys to marsh and deep pool banks being welcomed everywhere as chief of all the frogs and through all he kept returning thanks but while he is still looked up to and trusted as the wise judge kerchunk the tribes have never ceased to speak of him also as the rock frog end of chapter ten recording by linda Marie nielsen vancouver b c End of the Rock Frog by Harriet Anna Cheever